Okay, so the one thing you don't want to do with a template is call it a stencil, all right? Uh, a stencil is also a piece of material, maybe cardboard or plastic, that's been cut out uh, with the idea that you can paint through and uh, create the same image over and over with a stencil. Uh, so if you're Martha Stewart, you probably use a stencil for decorating around the house, you know, to put a bunch of uh, flower patterns along the edge of the wall in your room. Uh, but for technical drawing, we use templates, right? So this template here is for doors and windows and bathtubs and toilets and things like that for architecture and construction. Uh, there are electronics templates for electronic symbols. There are gear teeth templates for drawing gear teeth quickly and easily. Uh, screw threads, anything that had to be drawn uh, over and over. You can imagine that uh, in, a, in a lot of fields there are symbols that are used over and over and over again so there are templates for all of those things and all of those different specialized technical fields uh, flowchart logic controllers uh, ellipses uh, you name it even for lettering there are lettering templates uh, piping templates for drawing piping fixtures and fittings and valves in isometric all of these are templates just make sure please you don't call them stencils uh, otherwise people will laugh behind your back so just a quick review if we want to take a look at everything we've considered up to this point uh, we've been looking at all of our drawing instruments that came with our toolkit uh, we have parallel bars in the drafting lab and sometimes they make these a, a portable unit where you can actually pick it up by the handle there at the top edge and carry it around i've got a couple of those myself so it's a movable or mobile drafting board with a parallel bar built into it. Uh, if you had a big drafting table and you wanted to uh, not have to goof with a parallel bar, you might have this drafting machine, which keeps horizontal and vertical for you. And then if worst case scenario, if we had to draw things at home on a flat table or a, even a door, you could take a door from the Home Depot and put on a couple of sawhorses and make a nice drafting table. Then we could use a T-square to, uh, to do our drafting to make horizontal lines. Drafting tape uh, is not as sticky as regular masking tape. And that's a good thing, you know, because we don't want to rip off the corners of our drawing. We just want to hold the paper down while we're drawing on it with instruments. Triangles are used for making vertical lines straight up and down at 90 degrees to the parallel bar. Uh, we have 45, 45, and 90, and 30, 60, 90. And between the two triangles, we can get 24 different angles. The scale is used to measure at full size. Our scale goes to the near 16th of an inch. And you guys have an architect scale, which allows you to draw big things on small pieces of paper. Uh, the dry cleaning pad is used to put a slight fir uh, film of dust on your paper before you start drawing to keep it from smudging. It can also be used to rub out small smudges from the drawing. Just don't try to use like an eraser and grind it into your paper. That's going to actually smudge your drawing. We talked about pencils today and lead quality, lead grades, and uh, mechanical pencils, as well as lead holders. And if we have a lead holder, just understand you're going to need to sharpen it with a specialized tool because you can't stick this thing in a pencil sharpener, obviously. The lettering guide helps us to lay down horizontal guidelines for doing lettering. Uh, the erasing shield helps us to erase precisely and exactly to a specific point on the drawing without accidentally erasing good stuff we want to keep. The dusting brush is used to brush off the paper so we don't smudge it or smear it or grind our little grimy fingers into it. Compasses are used to draw perfect circles and arcs. Uh, dividers are used to step off distances or telegraph or transfer distances from one place to another. Templates are used to draw repetitive shapes over and over quickly and easily. And you have a circle template with your toolkit. The sandpaper block can be used to sharpen the edge of your compass or to blunt the edge of your compass so it's not so sharp if you want to make a fat line can also be used to point your pencils or your lead point, your lead holder to a nice point. Okay, and there are a whole bunch of other technical drawing tools that are not in your toolkit because we just don't need them in this class, but it's not a bad thing to know what they are. 
Uh, these things here are called French curves. And what they are is they are irregular, non-circular curves that are used when you have to draw a freehand curve, but you want it to be nice and smooth and perfect, right? So what we do is we, uh, we kind of lightly sketch out our curve, and then we find if we can line up the edge of our French curve with any portion of it, and if we can, we go in and we build our curve slowly, one little segment at a time, nice and smooth. And you can see that there are a whole bunch of different irregular curves that come with a typical set of French curves.